Okay, let's look at a big example. Remember the problem where we tried to compute the partitions of a number? Those are all the different ways of writing a summation of smaller numbers that sum up to some number. So if I want to partition the number 6 using parts up to size 4, I'll get partitions like 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 4 plus 2, or 2 plus 2 plus 2. We were able to count up all the possible partitions using tree recursion. Now that we actually have trees, we could represent all possible partitions and even print them all out. So let's define a partition tree. That's about partitioning a number n using parts up to size n. Well, now we'll write the base cases as we did before, which, if you recall, are that if n is 0, then we return success. We found a partition of n. The way we'll represent that is by just putting true in a tree as the root value. So if you have a leaf that says true, that is the leaf that represents a successful partition. OK, what else could happen? We could have n less than 0. That was an unsuccessful partition. So we'll return tree of false. Finally, if m is 0 and n is greater than 0, we have no parts left, so we can't possibly partition n. So we return a tree with false again. Those are our base cases. The recursive case broke up the possible ways of partitioning n using parts up to size m into two different options. If we use at least one m, then we'll end up calling partition tree recursively on n minus m, because we've used an m, and use m as the smallest size possible. Otherwise, we don't use any m's, and so we're still partitioning n, but using pieces of size m minus 1. Now each of these returns a tree, so let's call that the left and the right branch, and we'll finally return a tree that has m at the root, telling us what it is that we're either keeping or discarding, and then we'll put together as the branches the left and the right values. So let's see what we have so far. I could create a partition tree of partitioning 2 with parts up to size 2, and we see some trues and falses at the leaves, and then some numbers in between. So what we see here is that it's possible to partition 2 using 2, and so we reach true. Or we could partition 2 without using 2, at which point we use 1 and then another 1, and that's a way to partition true. Now this is not a convenient way to look at the output. It would be nice if we could just print out all the partitions. So let's write a tree processing function that does exactly that. Print partitions takes in a partition tree. It also keeps track of the current partition, which starts out empty. If it's the case that the tree is a leaf, well then there's two possibilities. It's either true or it's false. So if the root of the tree is true, then what I want to do is print out the partition. If it's false, then I've reached something that isn't really a partition at all. I can just ignore it. Now if this thing is not a leaf, then I still have to construct the rest of the partition. Here's how I do that. I get the left and the right branch as the branches of the tree. And then I want to print out all of the different ways of using m in the left branch, because that's what the left branch represented, remember, is using m. So I do that by recursively calling print partition on the left branch of the tree, using a partition that also includes the root value of the tree. which, if you remember, was where we put the number m. We also want to print all the ways of not using m 
So that's printing the partitions of the right branch of the tree, which includes the current partition, but doesn't include n. So if we print the partition of the partition tree 2, 2, we'll see that the two ways of making 2 are 2 and 1 plus 1. If we want to improve the appearance of this, we could also convert each number to a string and join them together using plus. Here's how you do that. So now if I print the partitions of the partition tree 2, I see that it's either 2 or 1 plus 1. And what if I print the partitions of 6 using parts up to size 4? Well, then I see all these possibilities, 4 and 2, 4 and 1 and 1, 3 and 3, 3 and 2 and 1, etc. And partitioning 10 really gives me a large variety of different ways that I could compute the number 10 using parts up to size 4. Using our tree abstraction and some tree recursion and some tree processing, the implementation that created this quite complex output spans only a few lines of Python.